I saw this, right? This is um Diane Vreeland, one of the former editors of uh Fashion Editors of Vogue, I'm pretty sure, from back in the day. Uh there's a really cool article here from um Harper's Bazaar that kind of details her secrets. And I thought looking at it, that the first thing that came to mind is that there might be a certain hip hop um rapper out there who could probably do with taking the cue of Diane Beerland's creative direction or taste or just the way that she kind of puts pictures together. Um, and I would hope you guys have an idea of what I mean, right? So I'll go this up here on screen. This is an article from Harper's Bazaar, Diane Vreeland's Secrets. The subtext is the legendary fashion editor and the subject of a new documentary, Diane Vreeland, never ceases to astound, right? And if you scroll and look at that picture, what do you see in this picture? You see, and if I'm describing it via to you on a podcast app, essentially it's an older woman who looks incredibly well put together. She has a, a, an amazing lace sort of fabric dress on and she's kind of lying lying on a massive vintage sofa with an, an adorn an ad, and a, you know, a range of tapestry and knickknacks and vases and lamps and chairs and all crazy amounts of furniture all around her. But there's one thing tying it all together. The colour red. Red. And I thought, you know what would make a good cover for this? Um, Playboy Carti's new album, Whole Lot of Red, that was due to come out a while back. We haven't heard about it. We don't know when it's going to come out. But I think this would be a pretty cool album cover for Darren Violent. Like, it, the, of... No, imagine Playboy Carti did a, um, his kind of version of this Diane Vreeland an image. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like imagine just here, maybe in like a, a, a maybe a bit more of a modern apartment, maybe with a lot more other trinkets around, and then him completely covered in red clothing, maybe eating a red velvet cake or something. That'd be flipping sick, um, or something along those kind of like, or, or, or just sitting there. But then maybe that'll be similar to the image on the self-titled album, right? That's where he's kind of like, there's two girls beside him, and he's like, what is he he's cutting through a paper or smoking something? But yeah, I think that'll look pretty cool. I think play with kind of whole lot of red. I think he should take that idea. So yeah, feel free to take that for free, my friend. If that means we get the album sooner than rather than later, I'll be more than happy. But yeah, I reckon I'll be really cool for him. But anyway, the article says the following. Um, it's a pretty cool one. It says, um, uh, when I married, uh, who, who wrote this article actually? Lisa Imo, Imodino Vreeland. So let's let's read this article quickly. So here's, here's Diane Vreeland's secrets, right? Um, when I married um, Alexander Vreeland, <coughs> yeah, when I Alexander Vreeland, this is Diane Vreeland's word, I'd never imagined that I would spend three years documenting his legendary grandmother, magazine editor and tastemaker, fashion icon, but I was driven by the idea of honouring her unique creative genius. During a 20-year... Oh, she was a Harper's Bazaar um, editor, my bad, not Vogue. Uh, during a 26-year tenure Harper's Bazaar, Diane Diana j didn't just clothe women. She presented them with aspirations, artful ideas, and the possibility of a glamorous self, which is amazing. And that's what you want, to live a life, um, you know, to live a life just kind of drenched and covered in creativity. Every single day, the only thing you think about is art. Your whole life is art. The way you eat is art. No, the way you wake up is art. What you do when you wake up is art. Um, the things that you eat, how you how you work out, what you work out with, what you're doing when you're working out, everything's a, everything's some some sort of an artistic dance. That's why I'm kind of at the moment. I think maybe this is my version of it. This uniform that I'm wearing day in day out. It's my artistic dance. It's my one two two step two one one two two. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Who knows? It continues here. Um, Richard Avedon said after her death in 1989, um, she was and remains the only genius and fashion editor. I interviewed more than 60 people for my documentary, The Eyes Has to Travel. I'm definitely going to, tra I'm definitely going to watch that, including her two sons, Tim and Frederick, and my husband and his brother, Nicholas, shared wonderful child memories of the time spent with their nonina. If there was one common thread, it was that Diana vision inspired people to push forward their own lives. I discovered many interesting things about her during her research. Here are the 15 of them. Okay, awesome. Um, um, I'd, I'd love being that kind of person. You know that kind of person where you turn up to an airport and you're never in sweats. You're always kind of done to the T, like in a fucking amazing suit. Like just, you just look incredible. That's what I want to do when I, when I grow up. I want to be that person that just turned, that goes, you know, mundane task. You're like, you know, you've got a full fucking, you know, Bottega Veneta outfit on. Do you know what I mean? You're wearing your favorite Celine jacket. Um, you know, you, you're, you've got these fucking crazy uh, suede leather, I don't know, um, sandals on from Prada, just, you know, popping down the street to go to the GP. I want, right, that's why I want, I want that, I want that vibe. But here's some of the um, interesting things she picked along the lines of Diane Vreeland. Number one, uh, pillows in her home were infused with perfume via hydrodermic needles. That's amazing. 
Uh, before coming, number two, before coming to fashion editor, Diana had a lingerie shop in London. A uh, legend has it that um, Wallace Simpson seduced Edward, then Prince of Wales, while wearing one of Diana's nightgowns. Mum store, mum store bought down the British Empire. Her son Friedrich once joke. She even had one um, nightgowns tailored with up to three fittings on one on someone's single one. A nightgown, tailored nightgown. Imagine now, that is just amazing. I love that kind of opulence. Number three, she always had her dollar bills and her tissues ironed before putting them in her handbag. Bag. Oh, this woman's too much. She ate the same lunch every day. A whole wheat peanut butter and marmalade sandwich washed down with scotch. Jesus. I wonder what that must taste like. Peanut butter and, and, and marmalade with scotch. That comment must be a bit strange, isn't it? Sounds cool, though. I'll let like try it out. Peanut butter is the greatest invention since Christianity, she said. Number five. She rarely left the house before noon. She often conducted a serious business uh, from her tub. Number six, only thing Diana loved more than fashion was reading. Her favorite book was Moby Dick. My life has been more influenced by books than by any other thing in life. Yes, books, reading, reading and books. I've got too many down here, as you can see. Um, I'm a big proponent of books. I try not to preach about it too much now because I just think, you know, you rub people's faces in it and they think that you're, you know, you're intellectually masturbating yourself. And just in general, it's a selfish, it's a selfless thing. Something that I do particularly with the stuff that I read. It's for my own self-interest. It doesn't really need to go outside of my brain um and you know yeah it's just not not fun not fun really um what else she had here that's interesting oh diane's favorite color is red but she never found the perfect shade which she which was according to her the color of a child's cap in any of his nason's portrait huh interesting but yeah i recommend you check it out um it's i'm not gonna read the whole list in here because i'll make for a boring podcast but check it out harper's bazaar diane Reeling secrets i'll link it actually in the show notes for you guys that want to see it and you can guys can have a look and obviously watch the documentary too documentary is called the eye has to travel i'm sure some people have watched it. i'm sure it's available on netflix and stuff isn't it, it probably is right is it available on netflix I mean, let me have a let me have a look see Let's see if it is available on netflix it probably might be actually i don't know the eye has to travel huh no oh what are you doing the eye has all right that so there is travel yeah it's available on youtube and google play wherever you get your documentaries from 